So you want to publish online. You want to promote your work. You want to get out there and start marketing, but you don't want to feel like a salesperson. You don't want to feel like you're making yourself inauthentic. And you might have this thought maybe very frequently, which is if I only promoted myself more, I know I'd be more successful. Or I see all these other people who are promoting themselves, who are getting sales and doing great. And yet I feel like I have more expertise than them. So what is it that's holding you back? Now, like you, I've explored a lot of the different content playbooks. You've probably seen tons of stuff on YouTube as it relates to how to game content, right? There's SEO hacks, there's using the trending tips and sounds and videos, there's using bots for engagement. Some people even have text message groups where they you know, text with each other to promote certain items and retweet. And it might feel for you like that's not exactly the way you want to go about publishing. So what I thought I'd talk about today is how to be true to you, how to use a few different strategies to publish content authentically online. Now, I've been publishing content for maybe five to seven years now, very consistently. And so I've had a lot of experience in trying to work through how do you find your unique voice and how do you publish in a way that actually feels right to you. So you might be thinking that you'd be making more money if you could promote yourself online. The problem is when we judge how other people are promoting themselves online. So we see influencers, we see, you know, just different creators in the space promoting themselves. We might be judging what they're doing and using that as an excuse for why we're not creating, why we're not putting ourselves out there. You know, many people, for example, are very turned off by Gary Vaynerchuk. I actually think he's great personally, but some people don't like that style. And so they see somebody putting themselves out there like that. And the reaction, instead of being inspired, is I'm going to actually not publish because I don't want to come off like that person. Another thing that might be holding you back is you're thinking to yourself, what will people think of me? What will my friends think of me if suddenly I'm talking about this new course that I'm taking? If I'm talking about this new side of me that I've never really put out there in public? But the thing is, people... You never really know how you're perceived publicly. You never actually know how other people in your network or people you don't even know how they relate to you until you start seeing the comments and the feedback. And so a lot of times we're just projecting what we imagine people will say in our lives if we start to show up differently online. So that can be a block for you as well. Another block for you could be that you're just scared to be in the spotlight. Right, It's scary to put yourself out there, be in the spotlight, feel like you're open for criticism, feel vulnerable. It feels vulnerable to put yourself on video and publish it to the world. And that's another reason why we might miss putting our voice out there and sharing it with the public. So what can we do? How can we find a balance of being promotional and putting out our work into the world and actually promoting what we do with being authentic? How can we lean into what's comfortable for us, what's real for us, where there's real connection that we can build with other people online. And that's something I learned for myself is that there is a desire to connect. There is a desire to put myself out there. There is a desire to grow my coaching business. So these are real things that I, I actually want and I know that could be held back if I'm not allowing myself to put myself out there in public. So let's talk about a few strategies. Let's talk about five strategies that will help you get more courage in being authentic and showing up online and publishing. The first thing is to play to your strengths. Now, for me, I like being on video. I like audio as well, so podcasting. And because I've written for a long time, I actually feel pretty comfortable writing as well. But there's certain settings and versions of that that feel less comfortable to me. So if you can figure out which format is a strength for you, it's going to help you enjoy the work that much more. And as you enjoy it, you're more likely to actually put work out there. So do you like speaking? Do you like writing? Maybe it's design. Maybe you want to publish to Pinterest. You don't have to be on every single channel. Just figure out the format that works for you that you're most comfortable with and you enjoy and focus on that. Don't worry about thinking that you should be a good writer or you should be good at something else. The second thing you can do is use other people as inspiration. So there's, there may be some people you see online 
and you just think, I do not want to sound like them. That's totally fine. Find the people that you are inspired by and ask yourself, what is it about how this person is coming off that I'm attracted to? What is it about how they engage with their audience that I think feels like me? And if you can pull out some of those nuggets and those inspirations and incorporate them, you can kind of use inspiration from that voice as you develop your own voice. Number three, putting yourself into the spotlight is an inch by inch process. It's not something we have to be way public right away. What is the next vulnerable step that you can take? Is it a 30 second video? Is it a two paragraph email? Is it telling friends you're going to be writing an email? How can you start to take that step and then be very open minded and receptive towards what comes back? You don't actually know what's going to happen when you publish. We never know who's going to see it, who's going to comment, how it's going to resonate, but we can be very open and be receptive to what comes back. Now, tip number four is to make your work more personal or less personal. So for some people, they're going to benefit by opening up more, by getting more personal, by talking in less vague and abstract ways, and instead in more personal ways. For other people, it's better for them to actually get a little bit less personal. Maybe they struggle with sort of just being overly personal and communicating too much and saying too much, and they can bring it back a little bit. Thing is, if you can share your story and make it true to you, it's always an attractive thing that you can do in terms of building an audience and publishing. Tip number five is maybe most important. Develop real expertise, right? So when you can connect your personal story to real expertise that you're doing IRL, and you can speak about that and you can just be honest about this is my experience. This is something I learned from this experience. This is how I'm seeing this in my life right now. It's always going to be a way to engage people from that more authentic place. So that's tip number five. So let's move forward. Let's move forward in building our own sense of authenticity as we promote our work. I hope that this has helped you think through some ideas that are going to be helpful for you in publishing. And if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear about that. I'm working on this myself. I'm continuing to grow in this area myself. And this can be a conversation that we can have. So feel free to reach out, comment, and all that type of stuff. So I'll be back again very soon. Thanks. Later.